a recipe for Russian crow's feet. It's a really cool recipe. You can make it as pastries, which is the way I'm going to make it today, or you can make them smaller and make them into cookies, and then they would be called duck's feet because duck's feet are smaller than crow's. I'm gonna start with farmer's cheese, which is a very common ingredient in European pastry making. I absolutely adore it. It's a pressed cottage cheese type. In some recipes, you can actually use cottage cheese if you drain it well enough and press out as much water as you can. It's loaded with probiotics and it's very nutritious for you. So this is a good pastry. So there we go, we're gonna add that. And now I'm going to add seven tablespoons of melted butter. And I'm gonna put it on my mixer and just blend these two. Now before I turn that on, I also have here one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to use one teaspoon of vanilla extract in this recipe. And there's no sugar in this part of the recipe, but wait, it's coming. So here we go. Can add the salt. I'm going to add the vanilla now. Okay, and now I'm going to scrape it down. I'm going to add the flour. So you can see that so far, it's a pretty easy recipe. There's no special talents involved in this. I've got to take it off. I can't tip this bowl well. There we go. And now we're just going to make this into a dough. And when it comes together as a dough, I'm going to roll it into a log because it'll be easier for me to work with later on. You'll see what I mean. And then I'm gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and it's going to go in the refrigerator for at least an hour. You could do this the night before. crumbly in the bowl, but we'll get it together on the table. Got a little smatch of butter there. Okay, now try to get up all those little bits. And if you look at this dough, you can see all the pieces of cheese in there. Farmer's cheese is not difficult to find. I, I've found it in most supermarkets. There's one that's a little softer, one that's a little harder. I've tried them both. They both work in this recipe. Now into a log because what I want to do when I'm done with this is I want to cut these into pieces and then I'll have 12 pieces to make 12 crow's feet. Squish it together it wants to separate a little bit. Try to get it into the same thickness all the way across. There we go. I'm going to wrap it into the fridge for at least an hour or overnight, and then I'll show you how to form the crow's feet. Our crow's feet dough has been in the refrigerator, this one actually overnight. So I'm going to unwrap it. And I'm going to cut it into 12 pieces. So eyeballing. Then half, half, half. They're not all gonna be exactly the same, but It'll be close. 
Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to talk about some cinnamon sugar. Now, I've made this cinnamon sugar, and I keep it in a jar. It stays nice and fresh. And we're going to be dipping our dough in the cinnamon sugar. But I don't want to put a whole bunch in here, and then I have to throw it away later, the stuff that I don't use. So I start off with some, and then I'll put this aside. And if I need to, I can add to it. If not, I'm not wasting it. I also have um, about six tablespoons of melted butter. I may need more. I may not need all of it. And then to finish off the tops, I'm going to use some coarse sugar. So put this aside, and we'll start working with one piece of dough at a time. My little rolling pin here. OK, now we want to roll this until it's about a 5 or 6 inch square. This is a six inch diameter bowl, so it will guide me as to how big I want to make it. Okay, and now we'll just I feel like a little kid with this little rolling pin, but the big one's kind of overkill sometimes. Nice dough, it's nice and chilled. You want these as close to round as you can. Keep moving it around so it doesn't stick. And you want it kind of thin because this is almost like a mock puff pastry when we're done because we're going to add so much butter and sugar to it. see how close we are. You know, we're pretty close. So what I do is I use the bowl as a guide. And now all of my crow's feet will be the exact same size. You don't have to do that. You can leave the rough edges. Now I need this over here, and I need the butter here. And what I'm going to do is give it a light brushing of butter. Just on one side. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to lay it into that sugar, kind of pat it down so it sticks. Put the sugar side in, fold it in half, brush it again, one side only to the sugar. Remove it, fold it in half, brush it with butter. And that's, I guess that looks like a crow's foot, <laughs> or what they call it. I'm going to now put these, as I make them, on a cookie sheet. And I'm going to just keep working with this dough until I fill up the two cookie sheets and then we'll bake them. So here I go. I've finished folding all the crow's feet, and I'm now brushing them with butter again. <laughs> My oven's on at 375 degrees. Okay. And I'm going to put on some of this coarse sugar. This will be, in addition to the pastry crunching, this will just make it even more crunchy. This stuff is great. You can find this in party supply stores or whether they sell baking supplies, you can get it online. It's not expensive. I use it for my holiday baking all the time. Into the oven, 20 to 25 minutes, and then we'll show you what the Russian crow's feet look like when they're done. I just took the crow's feet out of the oven. They smell wonderful, but they're really too hot to even think biting into, although I really want to. They are nice and crunchy. You can see the goo that uh, comes out from the cinnamon sugar. I'll show you these later, and I'll give you a little test of the crunch. But right now, they need to cool down. 
Here are our crow's feet, all done. They've cooled down a bit. And I've got my cup of coffee. You can see all that wonderful goodness. Mm. So crunchy, so buttery, so cinnamony. These are really good. I hope you try them.